Hey, thank you and welcome back. We are in the last part of the seven part series on why I decided to make the leap on investing in mobile home parks. Uh, and it comes down to they're easier to manage than you may think. Let me ask you, you say you have a rental home in your area and you, you got a leaky faucet or maybe you have a property manager. Uh, they're calling, your residents are calling, hey, I need this, I need this, I need this, because you, as the owner, are responsible, seeing as it's a rental property. And again, with mobile homes, the residents typically own their own homes. You're not dealing with faucets, you're not dealing with toilets, you're not dealing with backups and this and this and this, as, as you are in a lot of other asset classes out there. Now, this is just an example right here. Uh, some, some parks are a little bit more difficult to manage than others. A turnkey park is far less difficult to manage than a turnaround park. Uh, a turnaround park, if you will, is where you gotta add a lot of value. It's highly mismanaged. So if you're just getting started in the business, I'd probably recommend more of a turnkey park. This is where you've got a higher occupancy, residents own their own homes, and um, you pretty much just collect space rent. Okay, so on this park right here, Cottonwood, we still have it. Uh, I physically manage the park myself. 20 space park, uh, owner financing deal. Uh, why it's so easy to manage is it's 100% it's occupied. The residents have lived there for a decade and um, I'm not dealing with park-owned homes where we own our own homes. Um, been there for years. Exceptional demand in the area as well. That's That doesn't correlate a whole lot with uh, ease of management. But So here's what I do is you as the owner, you want to train your residents. And this is why our management, the the time managing it is, is so low. You as the owner, you want to train them, okay? What I do is I make it as easy as possible to train them. So what I did here, here's our park, here's the bank. I trained them and educated them exactly how to go to the bank and deposit their check. Now there's other systems where you can do scanners, you could do ACH, so there's a lot of different ways that you can collect a uh, lot rent for them, but I even took it a step further. What I did is I created deposit slips, and this is a space number right here with the account number. So literally, all they need to do is take that deposit slip, their $225, and go to the bank. That's it. So again, make it as easy as humanly possible for them to uh, make the lot rent payments for you. I'm not a huge fan of depending on who your manager is, like this park right here, we don't even have a manager. It's, I, I operate this thousand, thousand plus miles away. Okay, so what I did here is, uh, the way that I did it is I just put it through a printer and just spit out hundreds of them at a time. And then also, as you all know, I leverage the kiddos as well. So what we'll do is, is we'll package these up. We'll put about four or five of them in an envelope and then we'll mail them out to each resident every three months. So again, they they know this is coming in. Don't rely on that, but so you're kind of letting them know, hey, you know what, here's this for the next three months, just do this. So you're really giving them a step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step process. Okay, and then lastly, so you got your mobile home park. Uh, what I do is I use Grasshopper, and Grasshopper is an application on your phone, um, you can do it on your desktop, uh, your iPad, pretty much anything, and what it is is you get your own unique phone number. Okay, so once, once a resident calls, what I do is, again, train the residents or they're going to train you. If a resident calls, I'll let it go to voicemail. And what you can do is, is you can look at it on your cell phone and they're going to transcribe it for you, Grasshopper does. So you can look at it and see. Uh, are they calling for anything in particular, anything important? Or are they calling, hey, you got this kid just driving this scooter down the street, or hey, this guy is doing it. You would be so surprised the calls that you get. And honestly, like fully 90% of the calls are just, they don't even warrant to call back. I get if it's an emergency, 
If it's a big emergency, call 911. That's not your deal. You're you're the park owner. It's not your deal. That's call the cops. Um, uh, so okay, so the VAs will check the transcription, and if it's important, they'll get a hold of myself. So then from there, what I'll do is everything gets logged into Basecamp. And Basecamp, it's a it's an online cloud-based um, portal application system where everybody can communicate amongst one another. So we've got team members all over the world, and I could have our team member in an entire other country collaborate with our manager at the park, if you do have a manager, and then I can see everything that's happening on the sidelines. So again, say say you want to check in on the manager every single day, have your virtual assistant have the manager, hey, shoot a picture of this, shoot a picture of this, tell me what you did. Did you mow the common area? Is the trash picked up? Did you do your, your roles and responsibilities for the day? And again, let the two of them collaborate with one another. Uh, down here, this is PEX card and postal methods and same box. So PEX card, it's, uh, it's essentially a prepaid Visa card where you can load money up on it if you want. I've got some horror stories where uh, just a couple fittings broke on some pipe and a lot of these residents, they don't have a lot of money. So what we do is on all of our parks, we've got our managers that have these cards. And again, it's a very, very low monthly fee and you can automatically transfer funds over to them. So say something happens, say a tree limb breaks or say they need to fill a pothole or say the one rental house in the park has uh, a leak and all you need is, is a coupler fitting or something super small for three, four dollars. Well, now they have, they have the means to, uh, to take care of that. Samebox, uh, I have all the emails go to Samebox. So if you go to Basecamp and someone sends, sends an alert, then it goes to my email on Samebox. And then with Samebox, you can train your emails to go to specific folders. Now, if you own 10 parks, 20 parks, you need to find a way to manage them in buckets, if you will. And Samebox helps us do that. Now, lastly, managing the parks remotely, what I use is postal methods. And you can even have your virtual team use postal methods as well. Say I'm up the Oregon coast, riding bikes with the kiddos, just hanging with the family, which is what I love to do. I can log on to postal methods. And if I need to send somebody, uh, the residents, if I need to send them a late notice or um, a notice to vacate or uh, a notice of account change, I can just pull that up on my phone and send it to them. So it's just another, it's another avenue to have reassurance. Maybe you have your manager put the late notices on their doors. Well, a re I do redundant systems in everything, meaning I take two steps instead of one. I back check the back checker. So say the manager needs to put a late notice on the door. Okay, well, what I'll do is I'll have another resident or maybe someone even across the street walk through the park and look and see if the notices have physically been put on the door. Or I'll have the manager make sure that they put it on base camp so I can physically see the notices. Second to that, I'll also, again, go on postal methods and physically send them the letter. That way I know it's, it's double funneled, if you will, and I know that they're receiving it. So, and again, all of this is complete, completely remote and Again, there's there's essentially three or four key systems that you need to use, and um, that's pretty much it. So, again, I thank you, I honor you, I congratulate you for your time. I genuinely appreciate that. Uh, seven part series. This concludes it, and I hope you've enjoyed yourself. And I know that I have, just kind of sharing my story, why I made the move, why I made the leap, and if I could learn one lesson, it's just I wish. I knew it sooner. After a decade of getting burned, getting beat up, I learned a lot of lessons along the way and I just wanted to share them with you. I honor you and you have a great one.